Good morning and welcome to Uganda <coughs> First, a show that we hope is instilling patriotism. This is our first episode this year, 2022, and we are grateful to our partners, the National Secretariat for Patriotism Co., for making this show happen. The conversation that is almost everywhere now in the country is school reopening. You remember that schools were closed on 18th March 2020 in the first lockdown, and as we speak today, it is 660 days or 94 weeks and two days of lockdown on schools. So Monday is the day. Learners, parents, guardians, and the country at large, we're all looking forward to seeing schools resume, but also anxious about it at the same time. There is worry in some quarters, many asking won't schools be closed again if COVID becomes uncontrollable? Will the learners be able to cope with the huge amount of content that was uncovered and so much more? One thing that we are all sure of, though, is that when each one of us fulfills their role, there will be a good story to write home about. Parents, guardians, learners, teachers, school administrators, local authorities, ministry officials, have we comprehended the roles that we, we are supposed to fulfill in order for schools and learners to achieve objectives amidst the intrusive COVID-19 pandemic? On the show today, we have Honorable Dan Samson Oboa, the State Minister for Education and Sports and Member of Parliament representing a jury county in Alem Tong District. Our second guest is Mr. Godfrey Ashaba, the head teacher of Hillside School, Nadia in Ichira Municipality. Good to see you. Good to have you on the show, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Hillside, that is uh, Chira Municipality. It is. It okay. is Chira, Chira Municipality. And mm -hmm. I know it is uh, one of those with a, a big number of learners. It is true. I kept imagining how is Hillside and other schools like Hillside going to manage mm, after mm. Uh, uh, when the resumption happens on Monday. Yes, please. Numbers, numbers, mm, numbers. Mm. And you know, we've been hearing social distance, mm, you know. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. Mm. What, what is your thought? How are you, how are you planning? Uh, thank you for having me, Frank. Uh, it is true we have numbers, but it is also true that we have space. Uh, oh, we, yes. are, we are a school with over 120 classrooms uh, on 17 acres of land. So really in terms of space, space is no worry. Uh, is no worry. And number two, we've been fully trained uh, in managing SOPs, the standard operating procedures. Okay. And uh, uh, we are good to go. We, must ha we have ma uh, masks for our learners and the parents have uh, supplemented the numbers we have. And the vaccination has happened. And uh, above all, and I'm grateful to the government, uh, most all, all our staff are vaccinated, like I told you, and we are good to go. All right, looking mm. forward to, to Monday. Mm. We I, are I, I, I'll to be Monday. passing by. Uh, <laughs> you will be most welcome. <laughs> yes, uh, mm. I, 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 I'm interested in knowing how mm. yes. schools are going to start on, on Monday. Mm. Honorable, good to have you once again. Thank uh, you so much. Yes, and, uh, good morning, fellow countrymen and women, and uh, Happy New Year 2022. The anxiety. We are happy schools are going to resume, but again, very anxious. We, we need to hear something from, from government. You know, the, like I've been saying in the introduction, there is worry, you know, in many quarters when schools close again. I was at a saloon somewhere, and um, the uh, peers there were talking amongst themselves that, you know what? I am not going to pay school fees in this in these first two weeks <laughs> because this government you don't know what, what what's coming they they can close you know after all we have omicron it's here mm. and we hear numbers are starting to shoot up honorable thank you we, we need to hear something from from you i am happy that the to, to long nurse, wait to nurse our uh, anxiety the long wait is no more the presidential pronouncement covered three critical issues where all of our stakeholders and citizens of Uganda must exercise our duties, roles, and responsibilities to ensure that we implement the pronouncements of the president. One, you are aware that this is not the first time. Mm. In August 2021, a scientific decision was taken to open up for medical and health related institutions mm -hmm. and they have been at school in november 2021 again we took a decision on tertiary institutions and universities mm -hmm. and they have been at school on the 31st of december his excellency the president made the presidential pronouncement mm -hmm. 
which is construed to be having the force of law. One is stated that come 10, the pre-primary, primary and secondary educational institutions should open. So that presupposes when you unpack, schools will reopen on the 10th because we as Minister of Education and Sport had started seeing some schools coming up with cyclers, with, with cyclers where students and pupils should report before the 10th. But the president was emphatic. When you unpack, that means even reporting must commence on the 10th, 10th. not before. Mm -hmm. Number two, the president made a patriotic and nationalistic appeal to the citizens of Uganda, especially you and me, who are 18 years and above, to embrace vaccination. Because vaccination for now is one of the magic bullets that any responsible and reasonable government and society and citizen must adopt for purposes of attempting to avoid COVID-19. Then number three, he stated that the Minister of Education and Sports should proceed to provide a comprehensive uh, guiding principles. Mm -hmm. The First Lady of the Republic of Uganda and the Minister of Education and Sports has already done that, covering quite a number of areas. So it is now incumbent upon us, the citizens of Uganda, to exercise our roles and responsibilities, I know some of them are specific in nature because there are people who are appointed by the Minister of Education and Sports and they are placed in positions of responsibilities and authority where they hold it in trust. Mm. There are also general roles and responsibilities, generally as citizens, because I'm aware that um, this show is organized by Office of the President, mm. uh, especially the National Secretariat for Patriotism, uh, in partnership with the Ministry of Education and Sports, to rally citizens around exercising their patriotic uh, endowments to ensure that we walk the talk. So I believe that come 10, friends, fellow countrymen and women, we must prepare to send back our children to send back the students. But remember the clarion call made by the president. Remember the clarion call made by the Minister of Education and Sports and the First Lady of the Republic of Uganda communicated in the guidelines. Let's try to walk the talk. Let's embrace vaccination. Let's ensure that we abide by, in our respective uh, stakeholder responsibilities, the rules and regulations of the game. This is business and usual. This is new normal. Mm. It's like we are inventing a wheel. It's like we, the world is just starting. So there are things that will not be done the way we used to do them. So we must accept. We must be patriotic. We must act nationalistic. Because COVID must also bring us together. If we were divided because of politics, because of religion, but when COVID came, it did not say, Mr. Walusimbi, it's not selective. It does not. Mm. You are NRM, you are NOOP, you are FDC, you are UPC, you are DUP, COVID will not. You are Roman Catholic, you are Anglican, you are Muslim, COVID will not. So this must bring us together as a country such that we are able to agree that this is the way forward. And we all support. So that direction strategically has already been given by His Excellency the President and also supported by the Minister of Education and Sports, represented by the guidelines and cyclers signed by the First Lady and the Minister. I hear you. Uh, Mr. Ashaba, we, we're coming from a time that has had a lot of impact uh, on us. You know, learners are going to come with uh, different behavior, unusual and shocking. Um, teachers as well. Uh, they've been struggling in their own way. Everyone has been struggling. The parents, too, have a lot of stress on them. And uh, our thinking, there is going to be a need for psychosocial support for the learners, for the teachers, I think even parents <laughs> and, and guardians. And I don't know whether schools have had any arrangement in this regard. Thank you, Frank. 
Uh, but maybe before uh, I go into that, mm. I feel there is a need on my part to emphasize the, the, the SOPs. Mm -hmm. uh, like you asked, it will be our role to ensure that we help children manage and everybody in the community such that we do not have widespread of this virus. So uh, we must ensure that children and everybody in the community in our schools wash their hands properly with water, clean water and soap. We must ensure we sanitize all the time. At least in urban setting, uh, majority of us can do that. We must ensure that we have messages in our compounds uh, that the, the message is giving awareness about, about COVID-19. COVID uh, we must also ensure we have uh, isolation, uh, is isolation rooms uh, for, for, our, for our case and for the schools of our level. And even those not at our level should try as much <coughs> as they can because we must start. Uh, we should also uh, ensure that uh, we, we sensitize our children as much as possible like we've been doing with PSA uh, messages about HIV on, a, uh, on, 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 on every uh, gathering within our classrooms because mm -hmm. we shall not be having assemblies. So that this message gets into us, we get to understand it, and we are able to move on, reopen, and children learn. Uh, back to psychosocial support. Uh, we have had uh, stressors. Uh, as a result of this uh, pandemic, uh, different stressors, I will call them. Mm. Uh, we've had economic stressors. Uh, True, some businesses closed, parents lost jobs, teachers have not worked for more than, for close to two years now. Uh, we've had uh, children harassed, abused in different forms, uh, and, 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 and as a result, you, you expect a child to come back you expect a parent to pay fees, and you expect a teacher to be there to attend to this child who was harassed, who was abused, who is n not ready psychologically uh, to be in class. Uh, what are we saying? One, can we, uh, if I begin with uh, schools and parents, can we have schools come up with means of fees payment? Previously, we used to have zero payment policy before you begin. Can schools, and I've seen it. Z zero, zero policy, z zero tolerance uh, to, to have payment? Yes, zero. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's take it to that form. Uh, but I've seen already circulars in some of the schools that have come up with means of creating percentages such that parents who were affected can be supported to bring their children back to school. Uh, before I go to the children themselves, you have teachers, most of whom have not earned for two years. They are coming back to school possibly with no clothes put on, of course. decent clothes of put course. on. They have their own kids who need to go to school too, without scholastic materials, without uniforms. Can this director of this school get part of the little money parents have so far deposited um, and uh, advance, advance some of it to the teachers? To the teachers. Perfect. Such that my in, in mind they are stable because their children are also going to school. And then they, are, they can come and attend to this other child from without a lot of stress on them yes i know owners of schools will also say we are hit no income i saw yesterday on tv in, in your news uh stand big bank has one of the coming up support i am aware government has supported schools with captation grants so can we also uh it's have government schools it's schools yeah it's schools now for us on this other side the private i, I have seen stand big bank coming up can we have other stakeholders also getting onto board and support the schools. And then finally, on the same matter, we come to this child. Mm. Uh, you can't believe in 2020, that was in June, uh, on, 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 on the toll free of UNICEF, they have a to child toll free support uh, line. Uh, 600 cases were reported just on a single day in the month of June, just about- 600 cases of abuse. Of abuse, sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, uh, and there was a case of murder just on a single day. So you don't want to know what majority of these children have gone through. And so, one, as teachers, we are trained naturally to, to, to counsel and guide children. It's part of our course. Some other schools have gone an extra mile to have 
counselors in schools. Uh, so it, it will be our duty to guide and counsel these children. To do orientation, I, would do, <coughs> I don't expect any school to open on Monday and the Ashaba runs to the chalkboard and starts and teaching. And starts X plus Y is equal to Z. <laughs> I expect us to first do orientation. Prepare the learners. They need to be prepared. One, on the rules and regulations. They have forgotten them. Some have sure. even forgotten the classes, sure. uh, the, 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 the map of the school. Uh, others do not even remember how to hold a pen. I remember when we returned the P4s, children would write shortly and their fingers would remain to get up straight. So can we first do orientation for the learners? Can we sit with them, talk to them, counsel them? And as a result, children are always open to teachers. They will tell us several things. They have always told us several things. And then it will be our duty to counsel them as as teachers and the counselors we have and get them ready to begin to learn. Honorable, uh, the likes of Hillside, that's upscale, but there are our schools in Aleptong where the, the young people, they have been doing different uh, types of jobs and stone quarries and w whatever, the markets. And these learners are going to need counseling. They, and it has to be aggressive. They have to understand the need to be in school, the need for education. Who will help? Whose role is that uh, going to be? Uh, thank you so much. That is primarily, at a strategic level, the role of government through the Ministry of Education and Sports. Because as we speak, even when you look through the guidelines issued, signed by the senior minister, you will realize that the ministry has not just been sitting. Mm. The ministry has been conducting trainings to fit in the new normal. Before Christmas, we had already uh, conducted TOT. TOT. Training of Trainers Program. Oh, okay. And this one was targeting strategic leaders at the district level. We are training them to be trainers. In a nutshell, we want to have a multiplier effect. So when we train Frank Walusimbi from mm -hmm. NTV, mm -hmm. he's supposed to come back, assemble the staff, and impart that same knowledge. So the ministry conducted this, targeting district education officers, district inspector of schools, district community uh, development officers, district biostatisticians, among others. That is at a strategic level. Okay. But at operational level, we have also conducted some training of teachers. In fact, by, by December 2021, the record was indicating over 2,310 teachers trained. Across the country. One on the abridged curriculum. Because you know... The one that we had started on? Absolutely. Okay. You know we have a new curriculum. But mm -hmm. because of COVID-19, we disrupted. are now going for automatic progression. So there are core areas that are to be retained in the new curriculum. Then there are non-core that I think teachers will take time, I think at the preliminaries, to mm -hmm. take. They are not very, very basic. So we shall remove the non-core and leave the core. What a child. In order for us to compensate for the time lost. Because my son who was in senior one in 2020 is now going to senior two. Should have been going to senior, senior three, three, but now he's going to senior two. But he was at school for less than one term. So the teachers under their bridge curriculum, they have been taken through the training to see what has been probably left out, which is non-core and the core. So in the first one, two weeks, we expect teachers to be bridging that gap. Secondly, the over 2,000 teachers were equally trained on psychosocial support. That has been embedded in the submission of uh, the eight teacher here. So we expect them, when children return, to have that first opportunity to try to bring back the minds of these children from the respective services that they were rendering. Some of them in quarry centers, others were selling chapati, others were vendors, to try to bring them together in the classroom setup. So the teachers have a big role and responsibility to execute. 
and they have been guided. The moment they have their bridge curriculum, that is the guiding principle, that you must be able to handle A, B, C, D. Now, the other thing when they report, definitely, the time they're going to be at school has been extended. If they used to be at school for 10 weeks, I think it is extended to more than that. that. 14? To 14. 14. Mm -hmm. To 14 weeks. So that is also meant to give them the opportunity to cover. But we want to appeal to parents, just like you said at the beginning, that we, we need to now cascade into the roles and responsibilities. Mm, mm. As Minister of Education and Sports, what is our role? Have we executed? As district local government, what is your role? As Board of Governors, what is your role? As a teacher and school owners, what are your roles? So when you look at it from that perspective, each and every citizen vested with that public responsibility must be able to underline his or her responsibility mm. and execute. Mm. At the Ministry of Education and Sports, ours is more of policy, ours is more of regulation, and these regulations come through written communication, which has already been communicated. Sh should I add enforcement to those roles? Absolutely, to ensure compliance. B because you remember, uh, uh, is it uh, a week ago or so, thereabout, um, the senior minister, I think, and even the minister for higher education, were, were being uh, emphatic on the issue of not increasing school fees. But as we speak, you, you, you will attest to this. Schools have increased, uh, uh, schools have increased uh, fees by uh, 30 percent, 20, 40, and it's a lot of money. And we've been talking about the stress factors. Parents are already going through these stress factors. They don't know where to get the money from. And here we are with a circular saying, you know what, last time it was 1.2, it was 800, now it is 1.6, it is 1.8. That is uh, ex exclusive of the other requirements, you know. And who is going to come out and tell the school owners or administrators that, hey, look, we, we, we made a directive, no, incre no increment. I am here on behalf of the Minister of Education and Sports and government generally to communicate exactly that. Because in the guidelines, you know, the moment you issue guidelines, even at workplace like NTV, you expect two things. One is compliance and two is defiance. But your internal mechanism must also bring forth, in the likely event of defiance, what are the sanctions? Mm -hmm. First of all, in all the cyclers we are seeing for increment of school fees emanating from schools, majority of ed teachers are quoting Board of Governors meeting, which is okay. But I want to appeal to the Board of Governors to act judiciously and reasonably. The same parents you are charging are distressed, just like the schools are distressed, even government to some extent. That is why we had to go for a 40% budget cut across board is also distressed. Mm -hmm. Why did we do that? Because we were not realizing the revenues we thought we would collect. Board of Governors are appointed together with the eight teachers by the Ministry of Education and Sports. And by that appointment, especially those in government schools, it implies they execute delegated responsibilities. They are delegates of the Ministry of Education and Sports. And I want to call upon them to address their minds to the Education Act, especially there are certain provisions on Board of Governors. There are also provisions under the Education Board of Governors statutory instrument. They need to address their minds such that they know where they start and where they stop. I have even seen where they are supposed to make certain submissions to the ministry before their approval, because for them they propose and the approval is by the minister. It is well stipulated in Regulation 25 of, of the, the statutory instrument. Okay. It is well stated. So we want them to understand the predicament of the country, where the country is coming from, 
where the country is and invoke the patriotic traits in them. We must not behave like we want to squeeze Jews out of a rock. These parents are also doing badly. So it's a wake-up call to Board of Governors, especially of schools that we have seen, defying the regulations issued by the Minister of Education and Sports and the First Lady of Uganda can attract some sanctions under the provisions of those. Because when you read, it is a bit elaborate. So I want to appeal to you, members of Board of Governors, that we understand your predicament. But these are government schools where primarily the infrastructure is put in place by government. As I speak, we have constructed 117 seed secondary schools across the country and fully equipped them. In how the, long? The last year when? Uh, that was, uh, I think, in a period of two years. Okay. But they are now ready for uh, commissioning. The president and the first lady presided over one in Ibanda. So soon, when students report, we will be going into the field. And well equipped. Two, even during the lockdown, government did not go for the policy of downsizing, especially teachers in government schools. Because most of this starts with the government schools. And the ministry must first prevail on them because the basic requirements are already provided for by government. Government continued paying teachers who are on payroll, who are in government schools, even during lockdown to date. That is the role of government. Infrastructure is government. So why are we charging more at such a difficult time when the country is just recovering from a pandemic? Recovering, but the pandemic is still here with us. So I want to appeal to schools, especially government schools, before we crack the whip on private schools, I think we must start with our own, I would say in quotes, in discipline, children. You first put your house in order. Mm -hmm. So the starting point would be the government schools. We have held meetings. We have told the respective directors and commissioners to act, to prevail over these schools, to ensure that they respect, they respect the guidelines issued. If there are cases for increment, let all stakeholders be involved. Let it not only be PTA sitting or Board of Governors, bring all stakeholders. Of course, when you have Board of Governors and PTA, more or less you have, you have all the stakeholders. But only to make referral to a Board of Governors meeting. Why don't you call an assembly of parents? And you explain to them. You tell them, we have this challenge our appeal to you, that will be binding, definitely. And that will be a pressing need. And what are the pressing needs in this new normal? The pressing needs are rotating around probably, but even for government schools, we have provided captation grant. There is 62.6 billion for conducting some minor repairs already with district local governments. Has it started already, the repairs? By now, we expect it should have, because okay. this money has been with them since the start of the financial year. It was never returned. We only provided new guidelines. So we gave them the latitude to do assessment of primary and secondary schools that are owned by government within the local government, and they do those minor, minor re repairs. So what would be the justification for increment of fees, especially from the perspective of government schools. But as we speak now, Honorable, do you even have the muscle to crack a whip on private schools? Uh, they, they, of recent, they were asking for a bailout of at least uh, 100 million shillings. I had an association of, of them uh, trying to front that. And government was quiet about it until recently when a, a certain NGO, uh, I think it's uh, Care Give, something like that, that came up and said they would give 100,000 shillings to every teacher in private school. You know, it looks like uh, private schools have been left on their own. So in, th in the meantime, they've increased fees. And do you have the muscle to tell them, look, you can't do that. Uh, this is a guideline. You have to follow it. Do you think you can do that? You see, when you have a law or a regulation, there is always a window for exception. Just like they say to every general principle, there is an exception. 
So that must be the starting point. The general principle is, as Ministry of Education and Sports, we are not persuaded to think this is the time for schools, be it private or government, to increase school fees. That is the general principle. But just like I stated, when you compare private and government, the government schools, they have some latitude of uh, things that are provided for by government. On the side of private schools, because if government had the powers, government would even tell Ugandans, why don't you take your children to government schools, despite challenges? Ka so it is a choice. Capacity but the, is not government, there to, to the, the, the private schools, 15 million learners. even if they have any increment, that particular increment must be justifiable. That is one. Two, that particular increment, in my humble opinion, should rotate around standard operating procedures because that is something new. Three, that particular increment must be arrived at in a meeting where key stakeholders have agreed. In that case, you will know the parents were there, you will know the board, you will know the teachers were there, and they agreed in a meeting. But it, also, it must also not be this very sharp rise, like you're increasing by 30%, 40%, 50%. Can we have a small increment of probably 5% to cut off for SOPs, to cut off for painting of the school? That is justifiable, it is reasonable. Even when it is presented, at the Ministry of Education and Sports, yes, we have the mandate because we have commissioners who are in charge of government schools. There are commissioners who are in charge of private schools All right. for both primary and Second. secondary. And in the administrative hierarchy, we can even decentralize to district local government because there you have the inspector of schools, you have the DEOs, it can be decentralized. So government has the necessary human resource, there must be a will, but before that, we appeal to schools to go by the general principle. If you are going through the window of exception, it must not be, Should be something that does not fit the time. All right, I hear you, Honorable. I hear you. You're watching Uganda first. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, uh, Mr. Ashaba, you're going to tell us, how do you arrive at this increment? There is a school that was telling parents in a, in a message, a WhatsApp group, that, you know, of course, they, they, they let out a, a, a circular final, but they were saying, you know, we've worked on a swimming pool, we've <laughs> done repairs here, and I'm like, do we talk of swimming pools at this time? <laughs> when we talk, <laughs> it should be recovery. Recovery is still work in progress. You can't be telling me a, a swimming pool at this time. Anyway, we're coming back. You will tell us how you arrive at such increments. Uganda First is the show you're watching. Uh, let's take a short break. You are watching Uganda First. Thank you for keeping it NTV. We are discussing school reopening and how to fulfill our roles as citizens. This is a program that we hope is instilling patriotism we want to see patriotic teachers. We want to see patriotic parents and patriotic learners <coughs> if uh, this resumption uh, is going to work. Uh, we've spoke to some people about uh, the same. Uh, let's uh, listen in to their opinions about it. Children have lost a lot. Some have even lost interest in coming back to school. Uh, but uh, I feel when they come back, we need to be close to them despite the COVID-19. We need to be close to them and encourage them that after the COVID, there is light and they'll learn and things will be well. We made organizations as a school. We tried to stream these children according to how they have been. Some didn't go to school completely when COVID started.
some did not go to school completely others were trying here and there to see that parents get them teachers though we kept as a school we kept teaching on zoom so that our children don't lose it all dear teachers out there if you are given a chance and an opportunity please come back please you can give that business you've got now some other time then the rest of the time you come and serve the children still need us teaching is a call that you are called to teach and we need that patriotic thing in us that will push our children to the best we are teachers and being a teacher means instilling new things new activities new ideas into our children's mind and for that case we believe we are going to have all sorts of children whether they've ever been to school or not. Those children that have had challenges through COVID-19, we believe we are going to have them. First thing to do is to take them through, to fill their heart. If the kid lost a parent, feel that you are the one that lost the parent. If you feel what the kid is feeling, you're definitely going to fit into his or her shoes. And that will help the kid get closer to you. And the moment the kid gets closer to you, he or she is going to open up. And once the kid opens up, that is going to be the best. Then from there, you will have now to bring the curriculum. Once the kids confide in teachers, they will definitely learn. They will definitely feel like, oh, I'm talking to a friend. They shouldn't see us as teachers. They're going to see us as their friends, immediate friends. We should just create a friendly environment for our children, and they will definitely fit in, and they will be the best. Some children have gone through trauma. Some children have gone through stigmatization of all kinds, even the COVID has brought so many things into their mind. But I would like to encourage you out there, please, we teachers are your parents, second parents here at school. We are waiting for you to come back. Teachers who have lost hope, please, this is home. Parents out there, encourage the children who have lost hope to come back to school. We are waiting for you. Time has come. We have children there who are our future doctors, who are future engineers, who have a life ahead. Many children cannot mention certain things they have gone through with their parents. Many are child mothers. But if you can have an opportunity to keep the child and the child comes back to study at school, this child will be a good citizen of the future, of the country, and will have a story to tell in the future. We are going to make them what they need to be. They are the future leaders of this country. I believe we the teachers are because the nation is. Forget all that you have lost. Forget the experience you have had at home. Some of you had gone into casual labor, you've been selling everything, eggs, making some money. But let me tell you, that is short term. If you wanted to stay there and not come back to school, that's short term. It is going to end. But education is what you can have and lay hands on for life. Now, to our fraternity teachers, I know teachers all over, especially in Uganda, we've lamented, we've cried, life has been hard. Some of us have even tried what we thought was not our own, you know, selling everything for survival. I would love at this particular time to call upon every teacher wherever you are to think about your profession. A profession is a calling. So if we, we think the nation is because of teachers, you know you have a big impact. One, on the nation. Two, on the children you are handling. Can I first of all bravo to all those teachers who have thought about, without pushing you, but you are back to school. You are back to give a service. You are impacting this child. These children home are running back to say, I, am, I want to meet teacher Sanso. I want to, teach him, uh, to meet my teacher Jane. I want to teach, meet uh, teacher Samson. Uh, teacher everyone, because of that you had put in him or her. This is what I call upon every head teacher out there. The first thing you know that these teachers have gone through a lot. So I request that we do the psychosocial support. Prepare them. Let them love their, their uh, profession again. Let them love their, uh, their, their, their career again. Understand that they didn't have enough. And where you can, 
like we are also doing, that you can give them a little bit of a support to kickstart them as they begin. Because you know, if a teacher is lost, a teacher is disappointed, the same emotions will be carried to the child. Forget about, first of all, patriotism of loving uh, to become a teacher like me. It is the way you, the teacher, is handling him, which will make him also, him or her know that. I think if uh, I became a teacher like Mr. Kia, I would be a very important person. What is very important is the teachers, the administrators will be at the school to understand uh, themselves that the children who are coming to school have not been to school for the last two years. Even the teachers who are coming have not been to school for the last two years. The teachers should understand the children, should know that the children have not been there, the way the teachers are going to talk to those children, and the way the teachers are going to talk to those parents is something very important. There is uh, what was, we were taken through as hybrid learning. In that hybrid learning, there is a lot we, we learned out of that. And if there is a school which has not uh, had hybrid learning, it would be better they get in touch with their people so that they can take them through that kind of thing. Uganda first, some of the it's people we spoke to, many teacher. of them are teachers. Uh, you can hear them, they are having a spirited concern about uh, the issue of uh, school uh, resumption. Th there are also thoughts coming in from our WhatsApp number, the one you're seeing on screen. Let's uh, read a few. Uh, that head teacher needs to clarify how many children will be in a classroom. I see a scenario where if classes are smaller, more teachers are needed. Where will these come from and what will, will be used to pay? Like the questions are so many which are not being answered to ask the parents. Uh, you can note that, Mr. Shaba. Uh, this is quite much, but let me attempt a few sentences. Uh, you're thanking us for the program. That's uh, the sad beat about all this matter. Uh, the teachers haven't been supported at all. Uh, will they, how will they offer psychosocial support to learners when they haven't been supported through the pandemic? <laughs> it is one profession that hasn't been supported. Uh, why do they support teacher in teachers in government schools, uh, rent the, other, the others in private schools, teachers? All right, uh, let's see another. Thank you for the show. All right, uh, this is a parent. Can the guests tell us more about the automatic promotion and its effects? Some schools are demanding school fees because of the automatic, promo because of the automatic promotion. Oh, clarify more that if it's automatic, you don't pay P2 fees, you pay for P4. All right, this is a senior six student. They didn't put a name. And I have a job as a banking agent at my auntie's business. I'm mm. earning 200K a month, plus uh, I have my own savings. Why would I go back to school where I'll not be working? You need the education, my friend. <laughs> Better <laughs> prepare for Monday. <laughs> 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 you should be in class. That yeah. is, uh, it is good money. Yeah. It is good money. And Can it I appears yeah. like it is much, but it is not. Yeah. That one, I assure you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, mm. Let's do some reactions on the thoughts that came in, both uh, video and, and WhatsApp, and then we progress. Uh, thank you, Frank. Mm. Uh, yeah. This one, talking about the numbers in the classroom. How will you manage? Uh, how, we are, how we are expected to manage. Uh, one, uh, we shall do, uh, like now, schools with our, of our setting with, uh, with enough space outside uh, during normal days when it's not raining. We can even have children uh, properly arranged outside the, the, the room in, uh, where there is fresh air and uh, are given some, f uh, 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 made, I mean, learn from there. Uh, because learning does not only take place uh, from the classroom, we've seen it. Uh, children have been learning from homes uh, during this pandemic, most of them in urban settings. Uh, and then for those learning from inside classrooms, we, we've been guided. Uh, we've been guided by Minister of Education, and uh, if he's uh, the owner of a school uh, communicating, 
uh, or the head teacher, I expect them to have been taken through on the, on, the, on the spaces we need to create in classes such that we can make children sit and learn, but with less spreading of COVID. Three children will be putting on masks and the teachers. So as long as they have masks and uh, uh, well distanced, then they will learn and we expect them to learn very well. But that said, uh, I can't rule out a situations where numbers will be a little bit more uh, con compared to the spaces in some, some schools because I wouldn't talk uh, about, I mean, I wouldn't talk for other schools. There are those that will find a challenge in managing numbers from, from inside. Now, uh, concerning uh, automatic promotion, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if I can talk about it from our perspective, yes, uh, <coughs> the government has been very clear that a child who was in P1, because that's, that's, uh, this child had some form of learning uh, through the papers who, which were sent, uh, the, 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 the revision papers which were sent to different uh, parts of the country. And Frank, I was up country during Christmas, and one of the things I wanted to find out was whether so anybody received yes within the, my area the study material. Surprisingly, they did, and there was some form of learning. You can't compare it with the in-person learning, but there was. Uh, so, and then for other schools, uh, we did online studying, and some other parents did private teaching in their homes, uh, and so. Uh, when these children return, a child who was in P1 is returning as a P2. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I wouldn't expect a scenario of a head of a school to ask for fees of the, of the year the child never learned. We are not doing it at school, and I wouldn't expect it to be asked uh, anywhere. Let the children come into the classes the government has proposed, and let, let the parents pay for, that, for the beginning term, and let's begin teaching. No one should ask for amounts, in my opinion, uh, of the class of the of the of the previous class. We've been saying parents were hardly hit. We are all aware. All right. Mm. Keep your mask on is going to be another uh, command in the teachers' conversation. Mm. One, two, three sentences. They keep your mask. I I know what is mm. going to happen. This, mm. especially that they are, they are going to start getting used to this new normal. Mm. And, and okay. maybe kindly. Uh, yes. Uh, on, uh, on the issue of this uh, child who is already earning and does oh not yes, see the, 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 the reason of going back to school, one of the teachers there has been elaborate. Uh, this is short term. Mm. You are earning mm. this money, but it's short now term. You need education. Uh, and then after you have acquired your education, because education is not only about studying and starting to earn money. I, it comes with a lot of things about knowing yourself the feeding, how to manage family later on, how to live with others. There are several components embedded into this education. So I encourage this young man to go back to school, study, and he will earn much more than that, and he will benefit much more than that. Honorable, there is a lot to talk about, the, you know, the, the girls that got pregnant, those that have babies, the, there is a lot to talk about. But uh, let's finalize with the automatic uh, promotion. Uh, are you certain the quality of education will be the same or we're going to have a generation that is a bit different uh, in as far as uh, academic uh, content and its consumption is concerned? Uh, first of all, as a public administrator, I learned from the educationist that what we are going to witness is not referred to as automatic promotion. Mm -hmm. To them, they call it progression. Because automatic promotion presupposes that um, children did examinations and all of them were promoted to the next all mm. But here we are talking about a child who was in P1 progresses to P2. What is going to happen or what has already happened? One, I talked about their bridged curriculum. Mm -hmm. That is meant to cover for the loss. Because whether you like it or not, a child in P1, they are basics. The one year they spend, by the way, they are basic things that they must know to read and write, probably. So they are core and non-core, just like I said. So we will concentrate on the core for that particular class. Secondly, there will be continuous assessment. 
These teachers have been trained to continuously assess your class. Because whether you like it or not, there are schools, for instance, like um, Nalia Hillside, who provided remedial education through online. Mm. So you will have this kid from a jury county in a lepton who did not have the opportunity at Hillside. Then there is this one who was Hillside, has been going through online. So you continue as doing that continuous assessment such that you bridge the gap between this one who was here and this All one right. who has just joined. So we will have a kind of hybrid. It's going to be a mix of a number of things. But it is all aimed at helping the kid all to right. recover. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Shaba, I wish you well <laughs> uh, when the schools resume on Monday. And uh, Honorable, I know you on this, you are following up, you taking taking note of which, yes. whatever is happening. Uh, you, have, you have something? You Could I just end on the note of uh, 30 seconds we need to teenage agree. pregnancy? Our policy is clear, especially for government schools. Any girl who got pregnant, delivered, or is still pregnant is free to return to school from the perspective of government schools. Please, parents, provide the necessary counseling. Allow this girl child to return to school, whether pregnant or whether she has de delivered. This is the clarion call from government. We are not closing doors to them. Give them the chance. But it starts with you and me, the parent housing this girl in your house. All right, we have to get out of here. Clara in P3, Nalia Hillside, she's ready to return <laughs> on Monday. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Clara, <laughs> thank you for watching <laughs> and the others that you are with at home. And the head teacher is looking forward as well to, to receive you. Thank you for watching Uganda First, a program that we hope is instilling patriotism. We are here every Thursday, 11 a.m. until noon. Special thanks to our partners, the National Secretariat for Patriotism Co., Thank you so much for supporting this program. My name is Frank Walisimbi. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>